Guess, Guess who? who? <laughs> We're back again to talk about fifth grade unit four, the changing states of matter. There are two standards in this unit. The first is 5-PS1-1. Use a particle model of matter to explain common phenomena involving gases and phase changes between gases and liquid and between liquid and solid. What this first standard is talking about is the arrangement of the molecules or particles within solid, liquid, and gas. You can see in this diagram that the particles or molecules of a solid are closely packed together and they have very little vibrational frequency. The particles in a liquid have a little bit more energy, a little bit more vibration, and start to move a little bit further apart from each other. And in a gas, those molecules have high vibration, high energy, and they start moving rapidly away from each other and expanding uh, to fill the space of the container or to expand right out of a container. And 5-PS1-2, measure and graph the weights of substances before and after a reaction or phase change to provide evidence that regardless of the type of change that occurs when heating, cooling, or combining substances, the total weight or mass of matter is conserved. We're going to focus on the second standard for this video. There's also a clarification statement. Assume that the reactions with any gas production are conducted in a closed system. So Jeff, let's show the folks what's a closed system. I just asked. A closed system. So here at the baggie, once it's closed, would be a closed system. Okay, perfect. So everything that we're um, doing with our experiment is going to happen inside within the, baggie. the bag. Okay, great. And there was an, uh, um, an assessment boundary as well. There is. The assessment boundary says that for fifth grade, we don't need to distinguish between mass and weight. And that's a key point for fifth grade because as students do get older into middle and high school, they definitely need to know the difference between mass and weight. But in fifth grade, it's okay to use them interchangeably. Um, we're going to recommend that you use the term mass as often as possible. Teachers, we do want you to understand the difference between mass versus weight. Mass is the measurement of the amount of matter something contains, or the amount of stuff inside of an object, while weight is the measurement of the pull of gravity on that object. Mass is measured by using a balance comparing a known amount of matter to an unknown amount of matter, as demonstrated in the picture on the left. Weight is a measure on a scale or the force of gravity pulling down on that matter and then being measured on a scale. For all the activities we're doing for our video today, you'll need some balances which should be in your building. All right, so Jeff, let's show everyone how to use this old-fashioned triple beam balance. Let's do that, Kathy. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do with the balance is we're gonna make sure that the pointer is zeroed. The way we're gonna do that is we push all of our riders all the way to the left and make sure that they are all the way there. And then we see if the pointer points to zero. In this case, it's really, really right there, so we're good. If it's not, what we're gonna do is there's a screw back here and we adjust the screw just slightly at a time until you get the zero pointing, the, the arrow pointing to the zero. Then what we do is we put something on the balance, right, like that. And we start out with the largest of the gram weights. And we'll put this at 100. Too much. And we see that it's too much, and so we push that one back to the beginning. And now we're going to work with our tens. So if it's a 20 and it's too much, that means I go back to my 10. And now I start with the ones. And I'm gonna move this all the way until I start to see that arrow pointing at the zero. And we are just about there. So now I add up what I've got. So I've got no hundreds. I've got a 10 a four, and it's four, 4.7. So the mass of the cookie is 14.7 grams. 
So before doing the first activity, students should complete the formative assessment probe, Ice Cubes in a Bag. This formative assessment comes from Paige Keeley's books, Uncovering Student Ideas in Science. We really like these formative assessment probes because it helps students to think about the topic and also helps teachers to get a sense of what they know or don't know before they go into the topic. Good. So in this formative assessment, there's a prompt and then the students would circle the best answer or the answer they agree with. They would then provide an explanation in writing. So after they're done with that formative assessment probe, they're gonna complete our first activity called the Great Ice Melt Race. In this activity, students will need a Ziploc bag, thank you, Vanna, <laughs> and an ice cube. And so the ice cube Jeff has here, he added food coloring to that just so that you'd be able to see it better in our video. All right, so again, this is an example of a closed system. The ice cube is within the Ziploc bag. Students will need to get the mass of the ice cube and the baggie. Right, so once they get the mass, then when every, you have them obviously record their data, and when everyone is ready, you say the race is on, and students should try to melt their ice cube first. Okay. So the rules are that it must stay in the baggie. They can put the baggie under their arm. They can sit on it. They can put it on the radiator or anything else they can think that will help to melt that ice cube the fastest um, of everyone in their class. And when the melting is complete, so let's fast forward and pretend we're all melted, the students would again get the mass of the melted ice or the liquid water inside the baggie and compare that to the solid ice. So then as a class, let's go back to the formative assessment. Perhaps they wanna change their answer or maybe they have some new evidence for why they would choose a different answer. So you have a discussion about the formative assessment. Good. Hey Kathy, what did one ice cube say to the other ice cube? Oh God, I don't know Jeff, I don't have a clue. One ice cube said to the other ice cube, I'm cooler than you. Uh, Kathy, did I mention that my dad is from Iceland and my mother's from Cuba? You have not mentioned that, Jeff. Yeah, that makes me an ice cube. <laughs> All right, let's go to our second activity. The second, the second activity begins with a formative assessment, the cookie crumbles. Oh, so now you're going to make some kind of a pun about cookies? Sure, why not? <laughs> uh, Kathy, why did the cookie go to the hospital? I don't know, Jeff. He was feeling crummy. All right, let's go back to that formative assessment. Just like with the last probe, students circle the answer they feel is correct, and then they describe their thinking in writing. For this activity, the students get the mass of a chocolate chip cookie in a Ziploc bag. Then they crumble the cookie, and they get the mass again, and they compare the mass of the whole cookie versus the crumble cookie. As a class, they can then go back to the formative assessment for the crumbles and modify if necessary. Um, so the last activity asks students to predict what happens to Kool-Aid when it's poured into water. So they'll get the mass of the water and then the mass of the Kool-Aid. Then they would add the Kool-Aid to the water and they would predict what will happen to the total mass of the water and the Kool-Aid. Okay, so the first thing we do is we get the mass of the water. Once students get the mass of the water, then you need to get the mass of the solid. In this case, the Kool-Aid. So we have the mass of each separately, recorded that in the data table, and now we're going to mix the Kool-Aid into the water. And students can see the particles dropping down to the bottom. And then with a little bit of stirring, students should be able to see that it dissolves. And the particles have dissolved into solution. So now you want to go ahead and get the mass of the water plus the Kool-Aid in solution. And it should be the same as the liquid plus the solid added together. You may need to help manipulate the triple beam balance to make sure that that does come out the same because the sensitivity of the balance is, is um, well, basically not very sensitive. So let's talk a little bit um, for a second about the um, precision and accuracy in our triple beam balance. Hmm. Um, clearly it's not the most precise and accurate measuring tool. The goal for this is for students to understand that the mass of the two materials separate or for example, the whole cookie and the cookie crumbs, or the whole ice and the melted ice, those are gonna be the same. 
no matter what physical change we're doing to them. So you want to manipulate your conversation and you manipulate your data or measurements so that the numbers are close enough um, so that kids will see that. Did that, did that make sense? It does make okay. sense. All right. It does make sense. Uh, in, in general, these activities are a great activity great opportunity to practice collecting data and recording data in a data table. We want to remind you that there are many other resources in Atlas Unit 4 to teach about matter, and there's also more about mixing in the next unit, Unit 5, Properties of Matter. We'll see you then, and in the meantime, remember that science, science matters. matters.